Now um, we'll move on to our next impressive speaker and her job is positioning, um, is talking to this particular title, positioning your business to thrive in the social currency consumer revolution. So very nice segue from Mark's presentation. She's the founder and managing director of Astute Ability Finance Group and is a multi award winning business and finance broker with over two decades of industry experience. In addition to running her own very successful brokerage firm, she generously contributes her time and expertise and knowledge towards the betterment of the finance sector by sitting on MFAA's National Equipment and, Con and Commercial Finance Panel and their Opportunities for Women initiative. Acknowledged as a change agent for the industry, she is listed as one of the global 100 brokers and bankers across New Zealand, Canada and Australia and an honour which she shares with just 22 other Australian recipients. She's a strong advocate for corporate social responsibility and in her mission to fast track the finance sector's adoption of corporate social responsibility, she developed the Giving Forecast. In addition, she has developed the Young Entrepreneurs Program aimed at lifting youth's financial literacy, which has taken her all over Australia to present the program to school students, youth groups, juvenile detention centres, and as well as Indigenous youth from remote communities. And I've abridged her biography as well, guys. Um, please join me in welcoming to the stage, Mari McLeod. Thank you for that. Okay, well, first and foremost, thanks for the introduction and um, thank you, Dino, and to all of you who have given up time to be here to listen to uh, the guest speakers today. So it's, it's going to be an informal uh, conversation with everyone in the room and it is about social currency and how it represents your businesses to our future generation. Uh, we're coming up with Gen Zers now who um, have a strong belief. They work in virtual tribes. They have um, all sorts of wacky ways of uh, articulating what they want and they certainly do articulate it. So I'm just going to run through a few slides. Um, feel free to ask me questions as we go or if, if, if you've got a view on anything that I'm speaking about, please share that with us and the rest of the uh, audience. Okay, so coming into social currency, it's all about credibility. It's about influence and it's about leverage. We all know these things, but sometimes we have to recap occasionally. And by recapping what credibility looks like in our space, what it looks like to the outside community. Um, as we all know, we are now 70% of the market share. That comes down to credibility. It comes down to transparency and influence. We all influence somebody somewhere within our business, whether it's our team members, whether it's our existing clients or our future clients. And we have to leverage that. So we're always looking for the next customer, the next round. When we went through the Royal Commission, we were talking about losing trail. I mean, God forbid if we lost trail. How do we combat the fact that maybe if we did lose trail, what, what would that look like? We need to open up and leverage our existing client bases for other ways on how they're thinking for us to generate an income. Again, these are basic benefits. I, I'm not trying to um, reinvent the wheel here, but sometimes we just need to look at what our retention and conversation and conversion rates are. Um, and open up an, a, a bright conversation with our customers leads to good conversion rates. We all had a bit of a, um, a moment in time. A, again, a veteran, thanks to Australian broker who called me veteran this week. My phone blew up. Thank you. I'd prefer experience rather than veteran. Um, so the, the conversation and opening up what we talk about is what we know, what we understand and what our clients are looking for. Digital platforms and the velocity of change that has happened in the last two decades is incredible, especially in the last two years. So there was a conversation amongst older brokers saying, oh my God, these digital platforms, we're going to lose market share. Well, we haven't, we've increased. We're at 70%. Because our virtual tribes, our Gen Zers, our future clients are actually looking at how we engage. They do the research. But once they've done the research, they're social retards. They need to speak to a human. And this is why we are so relevant in this space. And being relevant and being social and having a currency that represents transparency and influence is one of their biggest things. 
They can all go online, we can all do the research and we've all done it. So, and having the ability to share values and standards. There are a whole generation, there are a whole new breed of sustainability and recycling and all these, these new ways to look at what products they want to purchase, how they want to purchase it. I have two Gen Zers in my household. Let me tell you, it is difficult. And they're boys, thank God they're not girls. Okay, more sales and loans are written because of knowledge, because of how we view our future client. Don't fear what they're asking for. You need to become the matter expert on fossil fuels, who's, who's playing in that space, what lenders are still assisting in that space. Gen Zers don't want to assist in that space. They don't want to use certain products because of environmental issues. Okay, coming back to how and why the social currency is built, and it's built on honesty, desire and information to entertain and inspire others while enabling them to engage and make connections with others. That's what we do as brokers. If you haven't already learnt it, the virtual tribes still need to engage with humans. The technology and platforms were frightening at one point when you got a 15 second home loan. Come on guys, we all work in this space. How many of your clients actually qualify for a 15 second approval? I've been doing it for 24 years. The last 12 months, a 15 second approval, you're kidding me. I don't think I've seen one in my business. There might be the odd one out there, but you have a minute minority of clients that fit that platform but the Gen Zers are gonna jump on it and give it a shot because they reckon they can. When they get the no, they go, oh my God, I now actually have to speak to a human. I need to go to an expert. So come back to your credibility. Come back to your communication with these virtual tribes, with these Gen Zers. These are our future clients. And some of us that have been doing it for 24 years, I don't know about you guys, but I used to fax one page at a time and I'd count the pages, and then halfway through it, the page would scrunch. So they don't have that. They don't know what that lo that's like. What they're looking for is instant gratification. That instant gratification comes with the platforms and the technology that we're all using today. Our future client, we need to start looking at what they're thinking, how they're unwinding this technology. It's normal to them. It's probably not normal to a lot of us. We think, oh my God. It's all about instant gratification. They get it, it's either a yes or a no, and then now they have to speak to a human, coming back to that piece. Okay, Gen Zers. A few years ago, before it became popular, I commissioned a report and a survey on my future client. It was interesting, it was character building. The character building was more on me than them. And what I had to understand is what they really felt was important to them, what voice that they wanted us to hear as brokers. So they're born between 1997 and up to 2012. That's our future client. They're raised online. Everything is online. Who has a two or three year old on the iPad? Or a five year old that can work your mobile phone quicker than Optus or Vodafone or anyone else? They know all the hacks. They know how to track you too. That happened during um, lockdown. We're all homeschooling Gen Zers. Two of them in my household. One was very good, he was doing his HSC. The other one, well, he had to be tracked. But I didn't know how to track him. So I went to a Gen Zer to get the tracking device on my mobile phone when he was telling me he's working uh, on his homework, he's down the beach. So these guys really have innovative ways of communicating, socialising and gathering information. We're also looking at them being around 20% of Australia's population in the workforce. That's 20% of a workforce that are gonna be your future customer. By 2025, it's a 27%, so it's increasing. We're also looking at an aging population that still need brokers, but we're still looking at the Gen Zers that need their hands held during a process when the 15 second approval doesn't come through. We're driven by mobility, flexibility, and experience and lifestyle choices. 
They all want choice. We've got to give them the choices that they're looking for. And again, it comes down to us having the right information and being able to research what our lenders are able to give Gen Zers. They're already doing the research. They're already looking at what drives these Gen Zers. Okay, Gen Zers and the consumer that they're adapting to more sustainable behaviours. What they're looking for, they're, they're looking at how they buy things. What what triggers them to purchase or use a particular brand? Ethics, sustainability. Um, you know, are, are you buying a product from a client or a bank that is drilling offshore and killing our, our reef? They're asking those questions. You only need a couple of those in your toolkit and then do the research once they say, oh, well, what about this company? So I have a couple of those around. You, you look at generations that also want the finance industry to keep pace with their, their beliefs and what they want to align their ethics with. And sometimes it can be a bit fickle while they're vaping down the back and then you know, they're asking you to find a lender that's not drilling for gas on our coral reefs. So this is where they're going. They're going to marketforces.org.au. They're making comments. Now, this is a really, really good website to get an understanding of what your future client's asking for when they're dealing with lenders. Um, th there's a page there that, you know, kick to the curb some of the lenders that aren't doing the environment any good. And they're making comments. They're getting their voices heard. If you guys don't know about these types of lenders, you don't know about what the Gen Zers are looking for, I suggest you just jump onto this site and have a little read of their comments. It'll soon wake you up. Okay, so this page actually shows you uh, the lenders that are, and I'm not gonna point any individual lender out. These lenders are making a change. They are listening to the Gen Zers. Are they on your aggregators panel? Are they on your panel? Do you have one or two of them? You need to understand that these Gen Zers are going to ask you this question. If they're not doing it this week, this month, this year, coming years they are. So you need to be on top of it. Now, talking about engagement and community engagement, that is where I find as a broker of 24 years, prior to email, prior to Google, prior to all of that, I spent a lot of time developing relationships within the community, knowing that the community and word of mouth was very, very important. We do have this digitally. We do have the ability to get out to our communities in broader reaches. You need to look at how you inspire your future client. If they see, and it's not just going to the local football game, it's actually looking at what your clients are also doing in their communities. How do you become part of it? A lot of people think it's about throwing money at community engagement. No, time is more precious than money, let me tell you. If you give up your time or a small portion of it, that will be far more remembered than the $100,000 your company gave to a charity. They're gonna remember the Mari McLeod that walked into a school who gave a inspirational speech about inspiring our future generations on what it looks like to be an entrepreneur. I, a few years ago, was asked to speak at uh, Cobb and Juvenile Justice. Now, I was speaking to a group of uh, 20 young men between the ages of 15 and 17. They felt they had no future. Uh, so I went in there and, and spoke to them about being a young entrepreneur. What did that look like? This was a community engagement I gave up my time for. So I went uh, to the, the juvenile justice. It was character building. Um, I did a 45 minute induction just to get through the doors. And I didn't look like this. No makeup, no jewelry, hair and a ponytail, the whole bit. So I've walked in and so they had no clue really about what I did in business, other than the fact that I was coming there to inspire them on how to be um, more engaging in their communities once they got out. Now, to that group of young men, that made all the difference. 
One of the questions that I got asked was, Mari, why are you talking to us? We're unemployable. You may be unemployable, if that's what you think, but I'm here to inspire you to let you know that you are employable. You can employ yourself. You can be a young entrepreneur. And I showed them different ways to do that. So that community engagement not only rolled through in getting to one or two of those young men, but it actually inspired some of the, the leaders that looked after them to engage with the broker community. A lot of people don't know what a broker is per se. You could be a mortgage broker, an asset equipment commercial broker. So from these community engagements and looking at financial literacy programs and giving your time allows you to build that credibility. It allows you to get into the minds and the mindsets of our future client. If you're engaging and you understand what they're looking for, you have a whole new landscape to work with. It's really exciting because it's not just about the major force. We're now doing more research for our future clients than ever before. So I'm not sure, I'm sure there's quite a few of you, I know a lot of you in this room that do a lot of community engagement, uh, but have you actually drilled down to see that community that you're working with, are they your future client? Are they your existing clients? What information do you need to have in your toolkit to be able to service and continue working and growing your businesses on the back end of what our future client is looking like? So uh, has anyone got any questions in regard to what that social currency now represents in this space? Is it chatbot? Chatbot. Well, chatbot is obviously when they're going online and, and they're chatting to you and asking questions. Yes, but they still at some point will pick up the phone because they need that, that warm, fuzzy feeling of a hug that they are being looked after. They've, they're doing the virtual research. They're getting the virtual standard chatbot answers. But there does come a point, there comes a tipping point. And that tipping point when it's all too overwhelming for them and they need someone to hold their hand. Again, that is why we, as a group, have 70% of the market share, because we do take that extra step. Who's doing any community engagement that's showing a big impact in their businesses? So what are you going into your local communities? Are you going further abroad? What are you doing? and obviously having open conversations about what's going on. There's a great organisation called Inspiring the Future. That is inspiring our young generations. Uh, it, it's a voluntary position. Uh, I do it every year, apart from when COVID shut us all out. And you get to speak to your future client then and there. And it's not a product flog. It's not a flog about your business. It's actually communicating and articulating what you can achieve for that individual, whether it be on financial literacy, whether it be educating their social workers, their teachers on how open banking works. These are the social things that they don't really know unless you're sitting in front of them and having open conversations. I went to another school, I spoke to 400 students in one day, that was a really big day. And I was speaking to them about what uh, financial literacy and the, the basic things that they really didn't get. Now I'm talking, this was a feeder school for the immigration department. So a lot of the students were a lot older. So the students there were wanting to know, how do I get a loan? What does that look like? What do I need to have? So we're having those sorts of conversations. And I, I pointed out to the older group, you know, if you want to buy your girlfriend a car, you're a third or fourth year apprentice, you've got a 17 year old girlfriend, you're gonna buy a car. You look like a hero, that's great. So he buys her the car. She's driving up and down the street, she's down the road, she's seen another young man. He's taking the finance loan out. She's driving the nice red car. I said to the group, who owns the motor vehicle? Well, the majority said, well, he does. He took out the loan. 
Well, guess what, buddy? You don't. That's called a sexually transmitted debt. You have put the car in her name, because in New South Wales, you can only register a car in one name. They didn't know that. The guy's got the motor vehicle finance in his name. Who owns it? These are life skills that you as brokers can teach your future generation. And those small skill sets that you're teaching them give you credibility and give you the understanding that that generation really values your insight to better positioning them in the adult world, in the finance world, whether it be buying a car, buying a home, purchasing a business. Now, the average, um, the average Gen Zer in their lifetime will live in 15 homes. They don't necessarily want to own that home either. They can work virtually. They can be in the Bahamas, Brazil, wherever, doing their online businesses. But you still want them as a customer. You still want to be able to finance their investment property while they're in Brazil. We can do all of that. That's one of the, the amazing things with the velocity of change in the last two years. So again, I think really this presentation is more about community engagement, understanding your future client, and acknowledging the fact there's certain things that us as ageing brokers need to get our heads around. And it is what, is what it is that the Gen Zers feel passionate about, and it's the environment. They're passionate about how their future is going to look. It's not necessarily just being a homeowner. What else can you offer them? We're now having to diversify our businesses. We're doing personal loans, car loans, home loans, equipment loans. I financed a racehorse a month ago. Now that's pretty a little extreme, but you know what? We are thinking a little bit broader. And by having these conversations, not only with our existing clients, but what the Gen Zers are looking for. So they, they may be looking at environmental loans. Have you got that in your toolkit? Are you getting asked those questions? I certainly am. And if you're not getting those questions asked of you today, you will be in the coming years. So those Gen Zers are gonna be looking for that. Uh, any questions on that? On the environment, on sustainability and banks that are doing it well in this space? Okay, I'm not going to pinpoint exactly each bank um, because it, it's not a product flog, but your aggregator will have a list of sustainable and um, environmentally savvy banks. Uh, a lot of the mutuals are, so you'll find a few there that um, you're currently working with, but you need to understand what they, what they represent for your client because you will get asked. Hi, Steve. How are you? Yep. That one? Yeah, fossil fuels. I've got, I mean, other than CBA, but the bulk, no, not that one, the other one. Yeah, most of these don't have the where for all to fund it anyway, and I would almost guarantee you won't need the mic. I don't need a mic. Yeah, uh, I don't think they've got the financial where for all to do it anyway. And if they did have the financial where for all and they were fronted up by a BHP or, or one of the big Rios or whatever, they would lend the money. So there's a bit of a, for, from my perspective, a bit of a furphy um, that yes, whilst it's true these banks have not done it, I would suggest they would if they could, well, hence this because there's profit. Okay, so hence this website asks those who are looking at it to comment, and if they do find out that some of these lenders have now jumped the fence, it is there to be commented on. So you can see, they do update this on a regular basis. So if it is the power of BHP that moves them to the other side, it will be updated. The dark side. The dark side, I didn't want to say the dark side, but money talks, clearly. Yeah, g'day. Um, call me sceptical, but how do we know the auditing is being properly done? So do obviously banks are greenwashing here and there. Is this website the source of truth or where can we understand? 
There's well, this is up. one of the sources of truth. They do have, obviously, um, people interrogating it. Um, I, I can't say 100%, as anyone in this room could not say that this is 100% accurate, but this is as close as we're going to get. So I think, Kim, you've done some research on this site. Look, this site is, is driven by um, a team of people that interrogate many different sectors of the industry, um, and they're young, gen debtors, and they're also university you know, degree people. Um, they, what they're asking for is when they get they if will you go back you down. To the, if you go back to the ones that still do invest in fossil fuels and the ones that have in the past and aren't, um, they're asking. It's a campaigning site. They're asking for activism in this space. So that's that is what this site is for. So it's it is it's quite detailed. Um, but you can see from some of the comments that it goes to 2016, and that is when the last bit of research was, and then they come back in at 2021 as the banks change their policies and divest. And obviously there, there is a, 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 an element of, you know, is it true, is it not true? It, it's like anything, you Google it, be Dr Google, it's up to you, but this is probably one of the best sources of the truth. I'm not saying it's 100% accurate, but it's as close as we're gonna get. For all the brokers in the room, is uh, community engagement a, a branding strategy now going forward? If you're not doing work in the community and sharing that work to customers, is, is that a strategy that all the brokers should be adopting? I think they should make it a consideration in their businesses. I'm not telling them how to suck eggs or run their businesses because I'm sure they're all very successful. But one piece uh, that does come to mind is the community engagement. And as I suggested, it's not necessarily money. It's your time that delivers a lot more social impact. For me to front up at Inspiring the Future with 400 students, that has more of an impact than me giving them $1,000 to the PNC. So you need to weigh up what your time is worth, what you're going to get out of that, whether it's uh, a legacy, uh, whether it's self-gratification in the fact that you've done something well, or whether you're going to actually have a spin-off of business. Now, I don't go to these community engagements and hand out business cards. I go to these community engagements, answer questions, engage with the community, talk to my audience, and from that, guaranteed, I do get business without a product flog, without flipping my card here, there, and everywhere. So, again, that social currency piece does deliver an exceptional outcome not only for yourself, but for your client and adding to your book. Any other questions? Yeah, um, thank you kindly for you know, um, your insight and so forth. When we talk about community engagement, like clearly, now people have to think when you give your time and effort to the community that it is intrinsic value, that you're really giving value to help people in you know, for them to progress rather than doing community work and aiming them to be your client, then these are two different things. Absolutely. You know, so there should be like, you know, clearly whether you decide to help women in the society or whether you want to help, um, you know, the underprivileged and so forth, but you need to have a goal. The goal is really, you really want to help them out mm -hmm. of your way, you know, in the true essence rather than, okay, you want to help them because at the end of the day, you want them to be your clients, at, you know? So it, these are two different things. So it, they are intrinsic value, how you want to really help socially. And if you have a duty of care being a finance person, how much you can give back. So yeah, I think- You're definitely right. There's two ways to do it. I wrote a, um, a school entrepreneurs program, which sits on the MFAA website, which is free to all MFAA members. It's 10 modules on how to engage in the community, in schools, etc. You're right. I, I often get brokers going, well, why would you bother? Are you making any money out of it? Well, it's not for you. That is not for you. If you're going into community engagements thinking that this is a product flog or to earn a huge amount of income off it, I suggest you don't do it because people will see straight through it. Absolutely. I, I worked with Cowboys House in uh, far north Queensland for uh, the, the first uh, two years of its opening. We saw 15 young Aboriginal men 
from the Tiwi Islands. Uh, a lot of them came from remote communities of 500, 800, max was 1,000. These kids had financial literacy skills of a year five and they were high school students. I worked with them and, what, and this is a community engagement we're talking about. It wasn't a product flog, it wasn't about making money. I watched those young men. There was a big fallout because obviously uh, the, nature of, um, the nature of where they came from and, and obviously having to leave their homes to come to the mainland. I watched three out of the 15 finish their HSC and I went up for their graduation cried like a baby because I was very passionate about the fact that you know these kids were given so much support from business people from the local community to see the three out of the 15 get to their HSC and complete it that was a phenomenal task it might not sound like a lot but that community engagement not only from myself but from the others that assisted actually had an impact and they're the things that you need to consider and the impact was on those students. But there is also that impact on your business. So you need to be loud and proud about what you do. And if you are socially engaging your time, even if it is money, time or money, you need to let the community know that you do do it. And your business will be very sustainable within your own communities. I do it Australia-wide, um, which is a big scope, but I also have brokers that assist me in getting into the community. I show them how to interact with that community and it leads them on the way. If we do it together collectively as an industry, our 70% 70, 70 market share is soon going to be 80. Any other questions? Um, yeah, what we're finding is a couple of the, the, the people in the younger generation are starting to look for other places of donation as opposed to like the normal Starlight Foundation, all that kind of stuff. Is, is that something, or do, do you know of where like we can go to find the, I guess, what's, what's in nowadays in terms of uh, charity work for people that are coming through. That is so easy. If, if you're talking to the, the Gen Zers or the younger generation and they're not, they're not looking to do the standard cancer council, et cetera, that our generation, well, probably my generation, not yours, um, but our generation have been used to, they are looking for, you know, uh, cleaning up our oceans. They are looking at feeding uh, starving children, all of these sorts of things. It's an open conversation. When you're actually doing a fact find and know your customer, ask them what they're interested in. Ask them what, what activities they engage in. A lot of kids are encouraged throughout their um, high school years to do community engagement and they follow that through into their adulthood. Uh, so you just need to ask the questions while you're having general conversations and you tend to find all sorts of different characteristics within the community. Something that you might be passionate about is very different to yourself, but they're both relevant if you ask the questions. So what community work do you do? What did your school get involved in while you're at high school? Or what does your company, you know, you might have someone who's working for um, an offshore drilling company. Ask them what charities they support. It's pretty easy to ask the question. Make it as part of your fact find because then you're getting interested in what the client's um, extra activities are and what they, they contribute some of their money or their time to. How am I going for time, Dino? I'm out. Okay, I can keep talking. All right, thank you so much and thank you everyone for... Um, having me here today. Thank you.